welcome to It's So Friday, where today we are going to be making the color crafting quilt using Robert Kaufman's Artisan Boutique Totally Tropical Collection, because it's winter time here in Southern California, which means it's sweater weather because it's like 55 degrees and I'm cold, and I need to think about a tropical beach vacation. So imagine that I'm not wearing down jackets and instead I'm lounging on a beach somewhere with this gorgeous quilt behind me and uh, a sewing machine near my side with a umbrella drink. It's just, it's all very, very good. Okay, before we really get into this, <laughs> I need to thread my sewing machine because my thread broke right before we went live. I am really excited. Um, I think you could even say I'm so excited, S-E-W, excited about this, but uh, I'm using a brand new Janome 9450 and it's fancy and exciting and it has this auto thread cutter that I'm not used to yet. So it might take me a few times, but we're gonna, we're gonna get there, we're gonna be best friends. Okay, let's jump right into our sewing project. How many times this holiday season alone has someone come up to you and said, hey, you, you quilt, you can make me a quilt by Christmas, right? You don't have anything else on your plate. Can you make like three or four? I think all of my grandkids need one and my neighbor and my neighbor's dog walker and you, you're the man for the job or the lady for the job. Regardless, half the time you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, what kind of job do you think I'm doing here? I don't have time for this. I hardly have time to make my own quilt. So here's what you say when that happens. You say, no, I'm sorry, I can't make your quilt. I'm very busy making the color correction quilt for myself because it's important to take care of yourself this holiday season. And here's how you're gonna do it. Start with a roll up. This is a uh, roll up, which is a two and a half inch strip <laughs> by width of fabric and it's rolled up and they're beautiful. And as soon as you unroll them, you will never get them re-rolled again. So case in point, this beautiful roll up translates to these beautiful strips of fabric that I can't wait to sew with today. You're going to need your roll up plus your background fabric. And to make this quilt, we are using a Kona black. Plus you will need, if you're making the entire quilt, um, three additional colors, which we've used Prisma dyes for, just to help give you a little bit of variety as you transition with the color. Now the blocks are very basic and easy to put together. And so this is something that you can do while you're watching those lifetime holiday movies, drinking hot cocoa. Maybe you've spiced your hot cocoa with a little bit of something extra. You can still get those perfect quarter inch seams while you sip and sew. Okay, so <laughs> let's get right into it. For starters, you're going to unwrap your roll up and you're going to look at all your beautiful colors and just, just cuddle them a little bit because they're just, they're wonderful. You're so happy with them. And um, if you don't already have uh, these roll-ups, you can go buy them from our wonderful shops who are carrying the fabric. You can find them above in the link in the post. And of course, of course, I'm being reminded over here that before you start snuggling with the fabric and before you do anything else, you should go onto the Robert Kaufman website and download the color crossing pattern. It is a free download. It looks just like this. That's how you'll know you have the right pattern. And after that, you'll be good to go and ready for some roll up cuddles. So here we go. After you have unrolled your strip, you could either uh, just kind of go for it, or if you're a planner and you like to kind of think through how you're going to have it, you can decide what's going to be in your top right-hand corner and kind of lay out your strips in order. Now, generally, um, someone either at Robert Kaufman or someone else, no, at Robert Kaufman, someone at Robert Kaufman has put the time in <laughs> to thinking about <laughs> the order that these fabrics go in. They're beautiful, and I will just, um, I would just like you to all know that at Robert Kaufman, her name is Elise. So if you ever look at a Robert Kaufman roll up and you think, wow, that is so beautiful. I love it so much. Whoever did that color, she really knew what she was doing. Her name is Elise. So thanks Elise, this is so beautiful. Okay, next, now that I have my strip coiled out, I'm going to take my Kona Black and I am just going to cut well, I'm going to give it a quick press so I don't have any of those pesky iron seams or fold seams from when the fabric's been sitting around in my stash. Now, 
if you have a piece of fabric and it's been sitting around for a while, it likely has these little threads. Let's go to the close up and I'll show you up close. Obviously, if we're going to the close up. So you can see that your fabric has these little bits of threads and hairs kind of coming off. And you don't want that for your fabric because it's annoying and it might uh, not give you a super clean seam. So what I like to do is using my 24 inch ruler because if your fabric is folded in half and, uh, and it should be, the fold is over here so that you can get one clean cut, you can just line up the edge of your ruler and give it a quick cut. And this is gonna give you a nice straight line to start with. Next, I'm going to, I'm gonna fold it in half again. Oh, look at all that, I didn't, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna fold that in half again and you can see that I've uh, folded it nicely so it's all lined up here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip. If you can't hear me, please let me know. And of course, like every So Friday, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask uh, my friends over here, Kyle and Yael, they will be uh, communicating the questions for me. In fact, Kyle has a question already. The first question is a really excellent one. It is about pre-washing your fabrics and if you like to do it or not. Now, let's go back now that we've cut a few strips, we'll go back to the main camera and I'll answer that question. All right, pre-washing. Pre-washing is like most things. It is a personal preference. If you have a laundromat close to you, or I guess if your house has a laundromat, i.e. you have a washer and dryer in your home and it's easy <laughs> to do laundry very quickly um, and you don't forget about laundry and you want to wash all your fabric, go for it. Um, the only difference I would say is I do not ever pre-wash pre-cuts because um, they could shrink, something crazy could happen, they could start unraveling and you don't want that. Um, I don't pre-wash any of my fabrics unless I'm making them into a garment. But I know people who do. I like to leave my laundry in a laundry basket until I can't put any more laundry in it and then I spend an entire day doing laundry. That's my laundry strategy. Okay, now that you have your cut strips of fabric, they're all two and a half inches, you're basically making a roll up of backgrounds because this project is super easy roll up friendly. All you need to remember for the math, I, well, okay, so you could read the math in the pattern and that's very easy. But if you don't like reading patterns, like some of us are bad at reading patterns. Some of us read the patterns and still do things differently. So if you're bad at reading patterns, just remember six and a half inches and two and a half inches. And that is all that you need to remember. So once you have your strips, you are just going to cut six and a half inches and two and a half inches. You are making the same block over and over and over again, just with slightly different colors. Well, I guess it's two blocks, but it's the exact same construction. So I'm going to cut um, one at six and a half inches and this is actually cutting two pieces per cut because um, the fabric is together. So one cut yields two and a half inch squares or two two and a half inch squares, another two two and a half inch squares, and this is two and a half by six and a half. Okay, so we've done that cutting and I'm just going to set my strips aside. Now, let's go up close real quick and let's talk about the color sense. Now you can see in the quilt behind me, well, you can't see it right now because it's out of the area. Let's go, you know what, let's go back to the main camera. I'm giving you Elle her exercise. She has to be like, oh, she didn't even go over. All right, you can see in the quilt behind me how the colors start, there's a chair here. Whoops. The colors start with this yellow and then they kind of transition to this yellow, blue, pink, and then kind of blue, purple, then to greens and teals, to dark blues and purples. And so while I've started putting this quilt together, I did follow that um, layout. So I started with this yellow and I haven't quite pieced all these blocks together yet, but if we zoom in close, I can show you where we're going with that. If Yael yeah, takes this over here. Okay. So you can see how these blocks are assembled into squares. So this is what we're making. And these will be the two blocks. The first one 
is a block that is all background with a single dot of color in the center. And that's a six and a half inch strip on either side of three two and a half inch squares. The second block is the exact same except it only has one six and a half inch strip surrounded by three two and a half inch squares on one side and three two and a half inch squares on the other side. And you'll just rotate these blocks to get that um, beautiful color gradation that you have going in your quilt. So I don't know if, if you can see everything, I hope you can. But we're working on that. So when you get to this point, at first you're just going to start making blocks. And a safe bet would be to make at least one and two of each of these. But some of them, as you get further into the quilt, you'll need more. So you can reference the pattern for exact cutting or you can just start making blocks because that's fun and then you can start doing your color layout next. Now your next question will be what color do you want to transition to? Um, we have a lot of choices. We can do exactly what the pattern does or we can decide, you know what, I don't like that next color. I'd rather go something really aggressive. So you can kind of lay out your strips to see what could be good next. If I move here, you can see how the yellows have gone through here into this boutique and actually would come through here and really pull the pink that you're seeing in this block. Alternatively, you could decide that you want to transition to a hard purple or that you really love how the green looks. And you can just kind of audition these fabrics to see with the scale of your prints and uh, what you'd like to do next. So for this, actually, I'm kind of really, I think this is a little groovy. That's a word, right? A word we totally use, groovy. All right, so I really like how this green and pink looks next, so I'm going to make my next blocks out of here. So let's go back to the main camera. Okay, well, we are at this point in our quilt where I've already made this plus block and these two dot blocks. I've also made three pluses already. So to just make a nine patch, I'm going to need to make two of the blocks that have uh, just a small dot of the color and one plus block. So what I need to cut from this strip of fabric is going to be one six and a half inch strip plus two two and a half inch squares for the plus, And I also need two two and a half inch dots for the color. So, again, you could follow the math and the pattern, or you can kind of wing it. And uh, we have sewn along with enough Sew Fridays, where I feel like most people kind of know that I'm a wing it kind of person. I'm a uh, we'll see sort of person. The beauty of working with batiks, and especially with this kind of pattern, is that it works super well for also pulling in other fabrics that you already have in your stash. Maybe you just have a little strip left of um, another color that you feel like would really help transition um, and this gives you all that freedom. It does make quite a lot of this little pre-cut dust on your table but that's easy to ignore. You just throw it on the ground. Someone else will vacuum it later, huh? All right, if we have any questions feel free to ask. I am just cutting, I am just cutting some strips and I was just kind of reminded that we are going to do a giveaway so if you would like to win the fabric the roll-up to make this quilt oh heck we'll give you all the fabric you need to make this quilt if you want to win all the fabric you need to make this quilt including the background and something else. Someone else will win another bonus surprise. I'll think about it and tell you what it'll be in a few minutes. We're going to give away two prizes. Now, in order to win, you need to, and this is going to be for the duration of this episode until it ends, um, someone needs to comment and tell us what your favorite Robert Kaufman roll-up of any time has been. So it must be a Robert Kaufman roll-up, any collection. I want to know what you've made with a roll-up. If you've used our um, it's a lot to do. So what's your favorite Robert Kaufman roll-up? What have you made with it? Or what are you hoping to make with it? 
and are you going to make this pattern with it? Because let me tell you, sometimes you just have that one precious roll-up that you've been hoarding for a long time, and those roll-ups love to live in quilts that are going to keep you warm and snugly on your couch or on your bed. So send me a comment letting me know what your favorite roll-up is and what pattern you wanna make from Robert Kaufman's website. And if you didn't already know, you can go on our website right now and check out all of our free patterns. Um, so leave me lots of comments because it's so much fun. And if you just wanna know random things, you can ask those things too, and I will answer them while I'm just cutting pieces out here. And just as a reminder, the giveaway is only for people that are watching this video live now and commenting before our episode ends. So hop to it. We'll pick a winner at the end and announce it, and then the giveaway will be closed. Okay, let's go over to our main camera here, or our secondary camera here. And you can see that I've cut my pieces out for one plus and for two dots. Yes, I am going over here. Yeah, I was asking me if I was going over here. I was like, yes, that is my plan. I would like to do that. Okay, so for each dot, you need two of the two and a half inch squares and two of the six and a half inch squares. And for each plus, you need four of these two and a half inch squares. So if you are like me and did not cut them all out ahead of time, you're going to really quickly cut them out just place them here and so this is what we're going to be sewing together okay let's take these back I'm going to take these back over to our main camera we're going back to our main camera and we're just going to finish cutting out those little pieces that we need okay now, let's see. This is a perfect project to chain piece on because you're basically just sewing the exact same thing over and over and over. So we're just going to match up. We're going to start with these little um, squares and we're just going to start sewing them together. Now this machine um, has some fancy new features. I'm very impatient when I uh, usually end a seam, I kind of pull my fabric out before the machine is done cutting the thread entirely. And this new machine uh, won't let me because the foot auto lifts, which is an interesting and cool feature that I'm not quite used to yet. So here's a good for instance. I just hit the remote thread cutter with my foot, so I don't even have to do anything. And did you see that foot just lifted all by itself? And so I have these great little chains. Now it does, I'm going to just go ahead and give them a press real quick. It does take a little bit more time for this machine to uh, completely cut the threads in between each one, which is also why uh, there's a real benefit to chain piecing with this because then you, you save yourself quite a bit of time. Okay, now the construction for the two and a half inch squares is the exact same for all three or for each type of block regardless of um, whether you're making a plus block or a block with the center because on the plus blocks, your dots are going to be on, or your two black pieces will be on either side of the color. And here, your two black pieces will be on either side of the color also, which means that you don't have to worry about potentially putting um, one of these pieces in the wrong spot. It should always be a color piece surrounded by the background pieces. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch these all together real quick. And I'm using a scant quarter inch seam allowance. The most important thing with your seam allowance is that you are consistent and that it is the same all throughout your quilt. Okay, so I just did that remote thread cutting and I'm going to go ahead and give these another press. And now I have three of these pieces all ready to go but I should have four look at that I totally missed a, I missed a piece so I'm going to go ahead and sew this little guy he's all alone over here oh my machine just came unthreaded that one's on me 
Now this is kind of cool because then you can see how this opens up to the side, which lets me grab the thread and fix it real quick without needing to completely unthread the entire machine. Okay. Now let's go ahead and sew. Okay. And instead of pressing in between each one, I'm just going to go right to sewing this and then I'll press at once. All right, does anyone have any questions? Anything you wanna talk about? Are you so excited for the holidays? I was gifted a 12 days of socks advent calendar and I am really excited about it. I was thinking about it this morning, how you know you're an adult when um, it is actually very exciting to be gifted a 12 days of socks advent calendar. Uh, Anyone else have a sock advent calendar? I, I do. I'm pretty excited about it. I am now sewing my six and a half inch strips to those uh, three block pieces that I just put together. And I'll open this up so you can see what I just did. And so you can see I have part of a plus side. I'm just going to take one more of these and go ahead and sew it on the other side. And that will give me the plus block. So really basic construction. That machine says that I need to rethread and restart because I did something to it. Okay. Kyle has a question for me. This will be good. Are you all done with your holiday sewing? Kyle asks if I am all done with my holiday sewing, and the answer is mm, kind of. No, I still have a few more things that I want to make that I haven't gotten around to yet. I've been out of state. I actually just came back from a trip to visit my grandpa in Georgia. So I spent last weekend with him instead of sewing. Uh, but I'll be done sewing for Christmas like in the next week or so. Probably I'll be done before Christmas. That would be the goal, right? Ah, oh, no promises. Kyle has another sewing question. Kyle asked if I have any sewing goals for next year. Um, I have a few actually. So I want to uh, work, I, well, what I really want to do next year is uh, release a um, fun Christmas themed project that I'm working on kind of in the back of my head that goes along with my book, The Fussy Cut Sampler. And I also have another secret project that I'll be talking about probably in January or February that I really can't talk about yet, so that's exciting. Um, my machine came unthreaded again. I'm doing something wrong, and I can't quite peg what it is, so I have to play with it. But I just got this machine yesterday, so it's, it's me. It's, it's user error. I have to learn how to fix it. Amy is probably tuned in, and Amy could probably tell me what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, and then I don't know what else I want to sew in 2019. I don't really know how it's 2019 already because it feels like it shouldn't be. It feels like it should be 2017 again. I have to cut out a few more pieces because I didn't pay attention to the number of pieces I was supposed to cut out, which happens when you don't really read the directions sometimes. Um, this project does create kind of a lot of pre-cut dust. And so if you have allergies, just know that um, this is a pre-cut dust friendly project as well as a pre-cut friendly project. It's gonna wanna hang out with you. So keep your tissues close by. Here we go, a sewing gently down the stream. Here we go, a merrily and caroling we stop. All right, we are almost done with our last block here. I think that one of the things this machine does 
is it has it programmed that when you step on your foot pedal or start sewing, it starts slow. And I think it does that so that the thread doesn't come unthreaded so much. However, if you know me, you also know I like to sew fast. So you better believe that one of the first things that I did was I changed that to start really fast every time. I think I'm going to have to change it back. All right, let's go to the up-close camera and I'll show you what I've done and what I'm still going to do. So just to give you a quick overview of what these blocks look like, can you see them all? I hope so. All right, so I've made these two here and now this, and I'm just going to go ahead and piece these in rows. So I've already sewed these two together. I will sew this one here, then I'll attach these, then these, and you'll do that with the entire quilt. So let's go back to the main camera. We're just going to flip these right sides together and go ahead and give them a sew. Kyle has another question. I always look forward to Kyle's questions. They are generally unrelated to what I'm doing. Sue asks a great question. She asked, what black fabric do you use and are you worried about it fading? We are using Robert Kaufman's Kona cotton. It is a super high quality cotton. I've never had problems with it fading. Um, so no, I'm not worried at all. I throw my quilts in the wash and dryer and everything. Um, I think one of the things you have to be careful about though with any um, fabric is once you've finished your quilt, I would store it out of direct sunlight because if you store a quilt in direct sunlight, like on the back of a couch or something, you will uh, get sun fading, like from the sun, but not from the fabric being produced poorly. Kona cotton is a super high quality, wonderful black fabric. You won't have any problems. All right, now that I've done some chain piecing, I'm just going to do some chain pressing. So I'm not even clipping the seams in between my blocks. I'm just going to give them a quick press. I have a question from Nancy wanting to know how many quilts do you make per Christmas? Nancy wants to know how many quilts I made for Christmas. And um, I have made no quilts for Christmas this year. However, I have made three baby quilts in the last, or four baby quilts. Five. Oh my gosh. I've made so many baby quilts in the last couple months because like literally every single one of my siblings is having a baby. Uh, one of them is due like any day. One of them is due in January. One of them is due in March. And uh, one of my girlfriends had a baby last month. And one of my other friends uh, got, gave her baby for her baby. It's just, it's been like baby quilt central. So I've done a lot of quilt sewing for baby quilts. I'm um, I can't really say what I'm sewing for Christmas presents since I haven't gifted them, but if you tune back in like on our December 26th or 7th episode, I'll tell you then because by then I'll have gifted everything. I will say this about sewing baby quilts. Oh, there was another baby. My, my husband's coworker had a baby and so she got a baby quilt. Um, I'll say this about baby quilts. People say that baby quilts should be like you know, 30 inches or whatever. But I kind of feel like, how, how useful is that for that baby? Because like babies grow, they just get bigger real quick. Um, so I like to make my baby quilts larger, if at all possible, if I can, so that they have them for a longer period of time. So generally the baby quilts that I'm making tend to be at least like 45 to 60 some odd inches. So more like a lap size quilt. Um, and I don't think that the baby so much cares, but it makes me feel good. So, you know, I guess I'm the only one I have to please with that. All right, now I'm sewing my rows together, waiting for my shred to finish cutting and my foot to tell me my pieces are free and just giving them a quick press. And you'll see just how quickly this comes together because we've already pieced almost all of these uh, little blocks together here. And I'm just going to sew that last row and that's the quilt. You'll basically just repeat this process. Like I was saying, it's a really simple one. So you could, uh, you could do this while you have a, a beverage, maybe some, some eggnog spiced with something, something, or you could have it with uh, 
some apple juice, just regular apple juice if that's your jam. I like a tall glass of extremely cold water when I sew. Ooh, yes. So Julie Karasek from Inspired to Sew, I believe, right? Patchwork. Patchwork. Sorry, Julie. Who am I thinking? Julie from Patchwork was saying this would make a great baby quilt, and she's especially right because it's so easy to modify the size. Um, it also is something where you could use multiple roll-ups and make like a king-size quilt or a queen-size quilt or a California king-size quilt. You could basically just keep adding blocks until you ran out of fabric. I mean, it's that easy to modify. Um, I have another question about black fabric. Oh, so please. There's another question about black fabric. Do you have a concern with the press that it would be used for black fabric? Um, so, someone asked if I have concerns about the thread color that I use when I sew black fabric. Uh, typically, I sew with an off-white. When I sew with black, um, Usually at home, I will use a gray or a black thread just in case like the seams kind of pull it all, then you won't see any of that um, color coming through. But if you go over to the up close camera here, I'll show you what this looks like. And you can't actually see my seams. I did use white thread because that was what I had in my machine, but it doesn't show through here. So I think at home, personal preference, I probably would Let's go back over here. I probably would change my thread color to be something a little darker, but if you only have white, you only have white and that's what you have. I would definitely quilt with a different color thread though. I wouldn't quilt with a white thread unless I really want that quilting to pop. So you can see just how quickly and how beautifully this quilt comes together, but it's also good to know that you can do this quilt with any roll up that you have. Um, and so just as a quick, for instance, I wanted to show you this little block that I put together like in the 15 minutes before we started this episode. I just used one color for the background and I pulled the Kona Not Quite White bundle, um, which is just a variegated shade of white in all these different, you know, all these different beautiful colors that are really subtle. And that's a really fast, easy way to give a, a more modern feel to this kind of quilt. So if you, want to try this pattern and you have another roll up that you love and you've been curious about how to use it this is a really simple way to highlight that fabric in a way that's just clean easy and really really fast and fun so we're about to wrap up our episode don't forget that if you want to win one of the two prizes that we're having here oh kyle's pulling a, i see her now she's going like this more that's me. She said she looked more dignified, but I looked over and I saw, and she was going like this with a notepad. So let's see. The winners of the Totally Tropical Quilt Kit is Cindy Harris. Cindy Harris. Woo! You win. <laughs> okay. And the winner of um, something else roll-up related that I still haven't decided yet, but it will just be a surprise when I mail it to you. Oh. We'll see. You want me to pick a second? Will be, oh, okay. Kyle's picking another person. Looking she's doing, here. she's doing the <laughs> random guessing. Um, the winner is? Let's see. I think Kyle. Uh, Macy Daly. Macy Daly. Woohoo! All right. Well, this has been It's So Friday. We are so ready for our drive home now. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm excited for the weekend. I'm going to take long naps and maybe uh, make a roll-up quilt. So thank you for joining us for It's So Friday. Don't forget to tune in with us December 28th, December 28th, when we are back here with special guests, Cece and Ava, for our very own episode of Girlfriend's Dolls. All right, we'll see you then. Bye.